Well, when I got up this morning, I was sort of thinking maybe miraculously all these little parts here would have put themselves together perfectly. Then I wouldn't have to do it today. But of course, I wouldn't want that because I am actually enjoying this build. And people have been asking me, uh, what are you going to do when this is done? You know, and, and it will be if I keep at it. I, you know, we don't know the future, but I would assume that everything is going to be uh, finished, I'm guessing, in about, well, probably by spring. Because I do have to make the case, and I haven't 100% decided how I'm going to do that. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Do I do another battleship, or do I do that big submarine the Trumpeter came out with a couple of years ago? Actually, that uh, big submarine, I think it was uh, 64, uh, 1 64th scale. Um, beautiful big model and that was my second choice way back uh, when we first started this and that particular model was in Winnipeg I didn't have to wait for it to come in and um, yeah uh, I'm starting to ramble again aren't I let's find my uh, extra thin here and start getting some pieces glued together I'm just doing a dry run here. Okay. I hope I'm holding that so that you can see it. Um, I'm noticing that if I squeeze it together on the nose section and the tail section, it uh, the middle holds together. Now if I hold it like that, the tail section doesn't want to go together, so I've got to try and squeeze it here. So I'm, I'm thinking that if I put my glue in the nose area and the tail area, I don't need to worry about gluing along here. And one thing that can happen is when you glue, glue along like that, the extra thin uh, will dissolve the plastic and uh, the plastic will ooze out of the seam. So the less, uh, you know, filing down I have to do later, the better. So I think we'll just try and uh, see what happens here. Okay, so put a little on here. And a little on the tail section. I think I put too much on, kind of ran into the fuselage. Okay. I haven't tried this, I should have dropped down a dry run with this thing. Okay, there's there. And once again, I hope I'm not getting it out of your field of view here. Okay, now how does that look? About 10 minutes has passed now. And uh, I know you didn't see me doing it, but I did use the hairdryer soon after I put those clips on there. Try and rush it along a little so I don't have to sit here for a big long time. I think that's going to be okay. Now, Those two uh, uh, little pegs that you see, they go in those two little holes in the bottom there. Well, that's pretty obvious, even if they weren't there. I guess it just helps to align everything. Yeah, like that. And once again, we don't want to be using any more extra thin than we have to here. I think I'll just put the extra thin along the bottom and then just drop it down. I don't want to be putting it on the bottom on the wing because it might run down onto the cloth. Once again, I'm thinking out loud here. 
Okay, so it's got to go like that. No, that doesn't seem to want to work. I'm afraid if I put that on, it's able to twist everything crooked, so. Maybe I'll just hold it with my fingers for a couple of minutes. Okay, about five minutes has passed here. And uh, I did use the hair dryer again. I'm not seeing any uh, uh, plastic oozing out from between the wing top of the wing and the fuselage, so that's, that's good. I still don't want to be putting any, uh, you know, stress on it because it will slowly let go. I, I imagine that the, that the solvent is uh, not completely evaporated out of everywhere. Okay, now, these things. Now, I don't know if you can see it or not, but one of these struts is a little longer than the other. And because when the airplane is coming in for a landing, it wants to be, you might say, flared out. And yet it, you don't want the, the, uh, the, the back part of the floats to hit the water and flip you into a nose down position. The floats are actually positioned at a bit of an angle. It's not very aerodynamic, but... Okay, come on, Ron. Okay, so the long one has to go... Let's get this thing turned around here. This could take a while. Okay, so... The long strut goes into the front right there like that, right there. The one I'm touching right now is the longer one. And the shorter one goes into the back. That will hold the floats at just the right angle to be realistic. It may not look as good, but that's the way it was. Um, yeah. You know what, that lines up really good. Okay, I've repositioned just a little bit here. And I'm thinking that if I could put a little bit of pressure somehow. Oh. Okay, my thinking was if I could somehow press down on all three joints at the same time so that the pegs go into the sockets, you might say. On the other hand, maybe I should just... Maybe just glue one in. Like, maybe glue this one in, and then... Let's see what would happen there. Let me look in the monitor and see what I got. Yeah, the camera can actually see it better than I can, which means you can see it better than I can. Okay, let's let's just put a little bit of extra thin right here and and just let that sit for a while. And the plastic is going to dissolve. And then hopefully I'm just going to wait a while. I'm not going to use the hair dryer. Okay, I'm concentrating on this one joint that we just did right now. 
The other ones will be maybe a little bit blurry, but I got it as sharp as I can on this one. And this is this is the end of a sewing needle. Darning needle, I guess. It's kind of a big needle. I just want to see. Does it appear that it is? I would say this joint is probably able to stand a little bit of stress right now. Okay, now let's concentrate on this one out here. Okay, once again I've repositioned here. I don't want to overdo it. I'm going to hold it down with my finger very carefully. And then if I can push this into the socket. You know what? I think it's probably safe to do this one as well. I think I've got too much on there. That's better. Okay, this one here goes on the same way, only mirror image. So, get it just right here. Here we go again. Maybe what I'll do is I'll edit out a lot of this Tom foolery. There. Okay, once again, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to solidify this one in place and then we'll worry about the other two, which are almost dead on. Okay, slip on the macro lens again. I'm going to try something a little bit different this time. I'm going to put the droplet of... Oh, that's too much again. Well, maybe it wasn't, I don't know. Just try and get it on there. Oh. Oh, that was too much. You know what? I'm going to try something different here, as, like I started to say. I'm just going to let this run and we'll do the time lapse thing and uh, we'll just see what it looks like as it slowly evaporates. I think I've got enough battery left that it should run for about 10 minutes. We'll see what happens and then I'll just speed everything up in the computer. Now that's something you've actually never seen me do is change the battery in the camera. But I have four batteries and I cycle through them as the day goes along. Usually I have to change batteries at least twice. And as number one is charging, I'll put in number two. And so it goes. Well, that was actually about uh, 12 minutes. Still a little bit soft. Gonna have to be careful. But I would say my uneducated guess would be at least 90% of the solvent has evaporated out of the plastic. I flipped everything around here 180 degrees. We'll get the other two struts now. We won't do the time lapse on this one. And I don't think there's any need to try and push these in. I think they're probably in the sockets about as good as they're going to get. Now I know I said I wasn't going to do the time lapse thing, but you know what? I gotta waste a little bit of time here. So let's slip on the super macro and we'll look at this one right here. I would say close to an hour has passed now since we glued that up and I moved in as close as I can get. I don't dare try to poke at it with my needle because I'll probably knock it out of uh, alignment here. Now just so that we can keep everything in perspective here, the area we were looking was just at the end of my finger. Let's see if maybe we can't get our floats together yet this afternoon. 
and then we'll call it quits for episode 321. No, I haven't tried this. This is a not a dry run and it may or may not be a good idea because I do have to paint these floats afterwards and I don't know if the uh, blue tack is going to leave a little bit of residue on there or not but the idea is that they will help hold it so it doesn't move around and it gets it up off of the uh, brown cloth here now I'm not ready yet where's my glasses Okay, now I got my strong ones on here. I'll just do one at a time. Oops. Well, at least it's not CA glue. The worst that can happen is it'll evaporate and I just have to put more on. There we go. Okay, now I think I can probably take it off of the blue tack and squeeze it with my fingers. Now is it going to stay together? No, it's not. Oh my, we're going to get a little bit of, just a little bit in that crack there. Let it wick its way in. Don't want to be putting too much on because then, then my fingers will stick to it. Okay, I think I would just hold that for oh, a few seconds, maybe a few minutes. I'm going to have to push the stop button. Okay, we're going to do this one differently. It's not glued on, it's just sitting there. So if I go like this, this should pull apart. Okay. Okay, now if I take it off and squeeze it with my fingers, it should be alright, right? Okay, I'm noticing what appears to be flashing right there and right there. And I, I do believe that is actually supposed to define, you know, the section of the float where it... Uh, you know, the the uh, the bottom of the float there where the back of the step is, that's, that's what this part of the float is called right, right there. That's called the step. And, uh, um, yeah, so I don't know if I should be scraping that off or leave it on. Maybe at a distance it might look okay. This one seems to be a lot more pronounced than this one. But you know what? We're going to have to leave that for tomorrow. And we'll make up our minds tonight what we're going to do. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and all being well, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>